Haunted Hearthstone League. My name is Cinder, and I am here with my homie per Supreme to my right here. Actually, that's my left. Uh, that's Appa over there, man. What's up? Homie Supreme. I like it. That's <laughs> that's now my new title for every cast we do Absolutely. Together. I am Cinder Ascendant, joined by Homie Supreme <laughs> Appa. Get that battle tag name change in as quick as you can. Oh my goodness, but that would mess with my branding for my uh, emotes and stuff. Oh yeah, I guess sure. yeah. We can't get rid of the, we can't get rid of the Appa. You're you're right about that. But uh, we are bringing you tonight uh, the one of the first matches for season two of United Hearthstone League. Uh, and, and if you're new to the United Hearthstone League, uh, this is uh, a combination, a gathering of all of the great content creators uh, from around the Hearthstone community, from podcasters to streamers to some uh, some uh, aspiring professional players. Uh, so this is a great uh, league to get in on as far as spectating, and uh, as the league grows, uh, more people will get involved, and you want to be behind that. But for tonight, we have, uh, from 1600 Dust, Chris Plummer, Rock Base, will be uh, matching off against one of the newest streamers in the Hearthstone scene, Mike Lowe, uh, who is, as of today, a Twitch affiliate, so congrats, Mike. Uh, they're going to be facing off uh, for week one, and Appa, I think you have the lineups in front of you. What are we looking at tonight? Yeah, so Mike Lowe is bringing two very standard decks, or at least as standard as you can get for the first week of an expansion, uh, two of the generally accepted most powerful decks, mm -hmm. being Q-Block and Spiteful Druid, but he's also bringing uh, a class with a twist. He's bringing Hunter, but he's not bringing Baku Hunter, which I think we all kind of accept as one of the stronger aggro decks in the format. He's bringing Secret Hunter. Ooh, but I like not it. Bringing, it's not all spells. Okay. It it uh, packs copies of the Tracker. Um, Stitch Tracker, yeah. Stitch Tracker. Mm -hmm. he, he's bringing two copies of those. He's bringing Deathwing, King Crush. He has two Bitter Tide Hydras. So he's really looking to kind of control the early game, and then, like, flip a switch around turn five and start being the aggressor, but he also has the value package uh, that, like, traditional Secret Hunter brings. So sure. I'm really interested in seeing how this deck plays out, because, I mean, I haven't seen it in play before, so I'm really excited. Uh, and then Chris, or Rock Base, he's, he's brought some fairly standard lists that we've, already, we've seen so far in uh, how the ladder's shaping up. He's brought uh, Baku Taunt Warrior, He's brought Even Shaman, which is Gengrey main Shaman, and Baku Rogue. So um, his his lists seem a little bit more standard, or his lineup seems a little more standard, I guess you can call it. Um, so I think I would probably favor him here. Mm -hmm. But Mike Lowe's Hunter Hunter list is definitely his uh, X factor here. He's that's the unknown variable that we'll be looking at. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm going to throw the, the rules up for UHL for the for the fans watching right now so they can get a, a taste of what we're doing while uh, Appa sends the players into match. Now, this is a very unique format, and what they do is every week they have to play three classes in a best-of-five conquest, and from there, from then on, for the next two weeks, those those classes are locked out. So they have to play with three of the remaining six classes, and then in the second week of that rotation – those three class, the next three classes are played, and then they only have three classes left. So over the course of three weeks, all nine classes have to be be, be played uh, before they can start over again. So that's why you're going to see some interesting stuff as the league goes on, like the shaman list, which uh, shaman's not very hot right now. I mean, the 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 shuttle walk thing was a flash in the pan, and sh uh, shaman's down to tier whatever again. But they <laughs> they do yeah. have to play it, yeah. So uh, hopefully we will get. Uh, into this very very quickly and, and see some of that tasty shaman action so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get this match going as soon as i can uh, get the spectation spectator client moving if you'll have to bear with us we are uh we're still a small operation trying to, to get off the <laughs> ground here we, we are an indie indie corporation <laughs> that's right indie cast but it's a lot of fun that's why Stuff like United Hearthstone League is so cool because it's it's people just coming together to do this because they love it, right? Yeah, and, and I don't know about you, Appa, but the excitement from the, the, the early fans of UHL has really kind of infected me, man. It's People oh, are yeah. really excited. I am, I'm really excited to be here because I knew of UHL last season. Mm -hmm. I wasn't super into it or, like, involved in the scene. 
but he like I got brought on to cast for season two and I'm really excited to kind of just like hit hitch a ride along for the season. I, I'm excited to see how everything plays out. The format I think is really cool because a lot of classes just don't see a lot of tournament play. So I yeah. think just forcing everybody to use all nine is really great. Yeah, and there's kind of a strategic aspect to it because you have to consider, okay, am I going to be playing strong classes this week or am I down to, you know, the weaker classes? So do I open up that three-week rotation with good stuff, bad stuff, a mix of both? And then you have to pay attention to what your potential opponent uh, will be playing because you you might be able to get a good read on what they're taking based on what classes are retired uh, based on the previous week's play. So there's... There's a lot of, uh, of nuance that goes into the lineup building in this this format that I like a lot. But this is week one, so it's kind of like uh, anything goes uh, for, for this week. All right. All right, cool. I got Mike Lowe to open up his spectate because I think it was. Oh, Lowe's. yes. I remember players always uh, be open to spectate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're heading in, and I see uh, Druid and Rogue. And as soon as I get uh, Rock Base up on the other side of the screen, we're going to enter the match screen. All right, here we go. Switching now. All right, and uh, we are uh, we're just starting uh, match one. If if the audio was cut off there uh, for a moment, I apologize, and Appa, I apologize for cutting off your uh, brilliant analysis for turn one. <laughs> but uh, both of these players off to what I would say are, are decent hands to start with. Uh, Rock base showing uh, that Leroy early on in a mid game swing with Bilespine Slayers, but I would say good starts for both of these players. Yeah, I think. Mike Lowe has definitely picked up one of his most important cards in Greedy Sprite because it's just a, a wild growth that allows you to contest the board at the same time. But he's really going to want to pick up a Spiteful uh, Summoner at some point here because he does start getting outclassed pretty quickly by Rogue because of the amount of pressure that they can put on. Mm -hmm. And his hand is fairly low impact. He has some utility minions right now. But they're not very impressive in stats on their own. Gluttonous Ooze will break a weapon like it just did, but it is just a 3-3. Three, three. And Spellbreaker, while it does silence something, and silence Whoa. is very important. <laughs> Look at this, the Blink Fox, the new addition uh, for Rogue in this ex expansion, picks up Duck's Fallen Aviana uh, from oh the Druid goodness. class. Oh, the, the memes might be spicy already tonight, Appa. Uh, I'm not sure... Rock base is gonna want to play that one yeah. against spiteful druid. <laughs> Maybe but not. We, yeah. we might. We might see some good memes. Yeah, here. you don't. You don't want to see a zero mana spiteful summoner play uh, behind Aviana, uh, and also this uh, inclusion of the Cobalt Apprentice. I find interesting. Maybe a little nod to uh, the the wide aggressive decks uh, that that can be seen in this meta. Yeah, one of the tougher like matchups I've found with uh, the aggressive decks is the paladin, either the even or odd paladin. And Cobalt Apprentice really helps kind of act as like a pseudo flame waker and clearing up a board of really small minions. Yeah. We're, we're seeing Mike Lowe take advantage of these double gluttonous ooze in his list, which is actually fairly important here because it kind of mitigates the amount of tempo that Rock Base gains from the hero power and mm -hmm. also gains him life, which will be important later on as the as the game drags on late. And uh, Rock Base uh, utilizing those Glacial Shards to prevent Mike from picking up the extra mana from the Greedy Sprite, although the Cobalt Apprentice is now going to give it to him, and uh, Mike Lowe's going to be going into six mana here. That's a, that's the scary turn for this deck. 
but uh, this is securing the board here with the dagger hit and the trade. Uh, Mike Lowe, no, no great play here on turn six. Going to have to go with the Stone Hill. Yeah, and from Rockbase's perspective, going into that turn, turn six is scary against Spiteful Druid, but he also does have the South Sea Deckhand plus Vile Spine Slayer combo, so he could take out any of the the large minions that Spiteful Summoner would produce. Mm. So I, I'm I feel like Rockbase has probably got to be feeling pretty good about this one. Yeah, he's going to be able to secure the board here. The Stone Hill doesn't really challenge the board. Vile Spine Slayer is going to go ahead and remove that taunt from the. Uh, from the from the face and uh, gonna deliver seven damage downtown. Mike picked up a, a rotten apple bomb off of the Stone Hill, which is not a not a bad pickup. Gives him a little bit of health, challenges the board, but I think seven mana. He's really tempted by my Malfurion here. Yeah, I I also really liked this Vile Spine Slayer play from Rock Base last turn. It might look odd to Vile Spine Slayer Stone Hill Defender. But since Mike Lowe didn't have the summoner on six, he probably doesn't have big minions in his hand. So just getting that Vile Spine Slayer on board to push that seven last turn, I really like because you're starting to threaten a really serious clock on Mike Lowe and develop a three four. Uh, the Cobalt Apprentice delivers just a single point of damage to one of these scarabs, and uh, Rock Base is going to have to rely on trades and weapon in this SI seven to uh, to get these taunts out of the way and continue pressuring Mike's life total, which is at 27 right now. He still feels pretty safe, although the board is starting to grow for rock base. Mike Lowe's going to have to find a way to survive to turn 10 to get to get behind that uh, ultimate infestation. Oh, man, this is a really awkward turn. He would have liked to pick up a cheaper minion so he could play two cards in one turn. But as of right now, the only two cards he could play are in this turn to get back on board are double spellbreakers, and that feels bad. So it mm. looks like he's going to have to resort to Hero Power plus Apple Bomb to try and stabilize this board a little bit. And uh, Mike smartly removing that Vile Spine Slayer from the board. You know, you don't want that being shadow stepped uh, back into the hand, but uh, he'll he's going to get the bad news eventually that Rock Base has the second win in hand already. And uh, Rock Base picking up a quite a bit of damage in hand now. Six from Leroy and four from Coldblood. That's 10 damage to go. That's uh, If he can find a way to get through these these persistent taunts, he's got quite a bit of damage ready to go. And, yeah, uh, the second rock base smells weakness, Mike Lowe is going to get hit really hard. <laughs> and our, our good friends are letting us know uh, past the five-minute delay that we lost our mics. Yes, m much appreciated, friends. Uh, we, we It is under control, though, as, as you will find out in five minutes. Uh so uh, Mike Lowe having the board cleared and is going to have to resort again to the hero power, uh, plus a fairly weak play, the Serenite Chain Gang, to, uh, to clean up the board. Although this does challenge what's remaining of Rock Base's board. Ooh, and then Iron, ba Iron Beak Owl getting pulled in to uh, possibly silence a taunt as well. So this game has taken a very interesting turn. Earlier, about like three or four turns ago, we saw Rock Base just completely dominate the board. But right now his hand is full of just... A Vile Spine, this Iron Beak Owl, and then Fluff. Because he doesn't want to play this Leroy or this Cold Blood until it's pretty much guaranteed to push a lot of damage to the face. And he doesn't want to play this Avion off, like, hardly ever. So he's working off of two fairly situational cards in the Leroy and Cold Blood. So Mike Lowe might be able to stabilize this game with this ultimate infestation on this Vile Spine Slayer right here. It's going to gain him five, draw him five cards that he can use for uh, resources to swing him back into this game, and also present a 5-5, which is important for contesting the board. And at this point, Mike Lowe actually has the board back, even though it looked like Rock Base was in a really good spot to start really pushing damage to end this game a few turns ago. Yeah, Mike now sitting on a full grip uh, is now out of lethal range uh, from Rock Base's hand, so he will live to fight for the board. Spiteful Summoner getting picked up off of the Ultimate Infestation. That's a huge, huge pickup for Mike Lowe. He's been needing that all game. Uh, that's the power play uh, for this deck. With um, the 10-mana minion pool being dwindled down to just five options uh, with the rotation, Spiteful Summoner in Druid is guaranteed to get, I believe, at least an 8-8, if not a 12-12 from Tyrantis. It's a 7-14. And oh, that's right. Yeah, the Ultra Sore, of course. Yeah, the the all Ultra Sore. This this game really has taken such an interesting turn. I'm kind of blown away by this. It's it's like I don't disagree with Rock Base's play in like 
running out. Oh of the my wild. goodness! Oh my gosh! Aviana <laughs> memes are coming in. What we were saying? Oh, no, oh no, picks up the spiteful. others. The second spiteful summoner pick gets picked up off the top of the deck. Mike's going to be able to play them both here. But that's oh my but goodness. that assumes that he survives whatever potential burst play that rock base has out of his hand so mike has to consider this carefully he can't be too too greedy first spiteful coming down guaranteed I mean, we, to get we it we need a drum roll here <laughs> <laughs> and he gets deathwing oh, for 12 12 deathwing means business right here now i don't think any of the potential minions have taunt no none of the 10 drops have taunt so he does still have to address the board Second yes. Spiteful Summoner comes down. And Mike knows that both of the... Uh, it's an 8-8 eight eight from Emerus. Uh, Mike knows that both of the Vile Spine Slayers have been played. There's no hard removal left for Rock Base. At least he doesn't hope so. But he still has yeah, to protect he, that base. He, yeah, he needs to get not too... He doesn't need to get uh, too cute here. So it's good that he's armoring up here to just kind of close the only out that rock base has in this game which is a ton of burst damage out of nowhere and sitting at 19 uh against how much damage does he have he has 10 from leroy 15 16 so it looks like he's he'll, he'll be able to close this one out yeah he would be he, let, let's see what is that again if it's 4 6 12 16 yeah so he's not quite there yet but if if he had a second cold blood in hands another charge minion this would be game, despite that amazing turn last turn. And with Rock Base having almost nothing in hand now, just three cards, that Aviana is not that effective. Uh, Rock Base, he sees that there is no out here. There's no way to stop this damage from coming in. Goes ahead and bumps into the Death Wing to uh, start the, the end of the game from going. And that's going to bring Mike the first win of the match. He's going to go up 1-0 in this series man that aviana i can't say that i blame rock base he really had nothing left to play in his hand may as well you know swing for the fences right yeah that was um i i really like the line that rock base took in recognizing that he really needed to start pushing damage with the vile spine slayers but it, it was kind of punishing that mike low got to uses both of the spitefuls right after he used both of the uh vile spine slayers so he, he didn't have any hard removal for the the giant minions but i i like the line that he took in recognizing that he needed to close this game out because his hand was it didn't have a lot of value and he really needed to maximize his hero power and the leroy and the cold blood and i like the line he took but it just didn't end up panning out for him not at all, but uh, we're only just getting started here, folks. Uh, Rock still has uh, potentially four more games to try and uh, take the series away. And uh, as we're getting ready for the second match, I want to let everybody out there watching know that uh, United Hearthstone League is a patron-supported enterprise. This is starting from zero and being built from the ground up by some very amazing people who are really committed to bringing the community together to have a lot of fun uh, with, with a format like this. And if you wanted to be one of those people on the bottom floor uh, of this fantastic organization via Patreon, you can do that. Go to patreon.com slash unitedhsleague to go ahead and find out how you can become a supporter. And there already are some. In fact, one of them, uh, one of the earliest adopters, Zeroshio from the Hero Power podcast, has kindly uh, donated a little bit of his scratch to help uh, this league to get off the ground. So join him and the others that have uh, con contributed to the Patreon, patreon.com slash unitedhsleague. All right, Appa, let's get the second match going. All right. So Mike yeah. has uh, retired the Druid. That leaves the Hunter and the Warlock. Uh, Chris still has to get a win with all three of these, including that Shaman. Uh, so we're going to see exactly how well this goes uh, how do you think uh, this looks for Mike right now, sitting on a single win? Uh, I think it looks fairly good for him. He has the Q block, which can pick up a, a game win pretty much anywhere against right. any of these decks. The The thing is, it's going to boil down to the Secret Hunter, and if it can find a win against uh, any of these decks, uh, against Baku Rogue, it's probably unfavored because yeah. Baku Rogue just puts on so much pressure. I'm not sure how the even Shaman matchup plays, and against Taunt Warrior, I'm 
I don't know. It, it feels like it'll be hard to break through that giant wall of taunts. Yeah, that's um, the Taunt Warrior, though, can fall victim to some pretty bad draws. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, this card right here uh, from the new set, the um, no, I don't have the card name in front of me, but the Echo 3 mana 2 4 Taunt, that'll help you get to that quest real, real quick. Uh, Michael, starting with the Doomsayer, definitely wants to see that in the early game here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of this card. What is what, it? It is Phantom Militia? Yeah, that's it. I, yeah, I got it. I didn't even have to pull it up. <laughs> okay. Um, Michael also running the Gnome for Ratu, which is super interesting. That could uh, potentially uh, cause some havoc uh, for Rock Base if he hits uh, an important card. But uh, Tom Warrior, not really reliant on combos. It's got quite a bit of redundancy, so I think he's got uh, room to lose a couple cards off the top. Yeah, Tom Warrior is a very straightforward but powerful game plan mm -hmm. and known for uh if it's not picking apart specific pieces it mostly just puts your opponent into fatigue a little bit faster and i don't think this is where this matchup really goes mm -hmm. this matchup's going to revolve around rock base holding a brawl until after Gul'dan, and then start picking off things with the ragnaros hero power of return yep um so it's going to involve him turboing out this quest as fast as possible which his hand is Pretty well equipped to do with Phantom Militia, Tar Creeper, Apple Bomb, and Stone Hill. Yeah, so just he's pick up the Stone quest Hill. online fairly quickly. Uh, by quickly, we mean like turn eight or nine, mm. but quickly in this kind of matchup. Right. And uh, then Mike's going to have to kind of rush Rock Base down before this Ragnaros Hero Power starts taking over the game. But in order and to. In the mean yeah, and in the meantime, he'll be tanking up every turn. So. Yeah. I mean, in in order for for Mike to 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 put on that pressure, he needs either a skull or a, a lucky pull from that possessed lackey. And so far, there's no easy way for that lackey to trigger out its uh its its recruit from the deck. Uh, and as you said, Rock Base just arm not armoring up, tanking up every turn, uh, to put himself out of burst range from like a cube combo or something like that. Yeah, this uh. The, the Taunt Warrior, while it's developing its Taunt Minions and kind of sculpting a hand with cards like Stonehill Defender, like Tar Creeper to alleviate pressure, it is tanking up almost every turn. So it's gaining four, then it's at eight and 12. And then like at a certain point, you just look up, it's like, they have 30 armor. I have to deal 60 to them. Yeah. I can... and, and like in the meantime, they're also hitting you with eight every turn from their right. hero power. So you're like, oh my goodness. See, th there are there are some people watching who I am sure are newer to the game and don't remember just a card, True Heart, who upgraded your hero power, and she cost six mana, but she did that from turn six, maybe seven or eight, and tank up was still good enough back then. Now they get it from the beginning of the game, so there is so much survivability uh, for these Baku warriors. And uh, looks like Mike Lowe did not get the flip he was looking for off the Possessed Lackey. Voidlord coming out of the deck. He, I think he really wanted to see uh, one of those Doom Guards to start putting on some pressure. Yeah, you really want to see a Doom Guard, but Voidlord is still okay. It, it, it's not the biggest clock, and by itself, it, like, Rock Base will still even gain one a turn from Tanka, but it also it is sticky, and it presents a little bit of a problem for the Taunt Warrior in that they eventually do need to remove it. Because it will clear a minion every single turn, and it also has taunt. So Michael is not going to be taking damage from these minions. It's just going to kind of be a stalemate on the board while each player tries to sculpt their game hand or their game plan to be uh, as of, as effective as possible. So it's really going to come down to if Mike Lowe can probably find a skull of the Minari before Rock Base uh, finishes his quest. Yep. Gnome Feratu picks off one of the Reckless Flurries, uh, one of the new clear options available for Warrior. Uh, but Rock Base does have both brawls in hand, which is exactly what he needs uh, to start planning for this in-game scenario uh, with this Warlock deck. And um, also picks up a, a Shield Slam, so a little bit of hard removal as well. Uh, and he's gotten up to, so far, four ticks on the quest. Only needs three more taunts to be played. Could even uh, go for this humongous Tar Lord that's sitting here at seven mana if he wants to. Yeah, this matchup really comes down to how well the Taunt Warrior can utilize their brawls. Ooh. And I don't like this as much. Yeah. Because I, I was actually about to go into this. It, it really comes down 
to how greedy you can get on your balls, and you want to save them for as late as possible, mm -hmm. because you don't take that much pressure because of the nature of the deck. You just play a bunch of taunts, and you force your opponent to overextend, or you just take, don't take damage, and when they finally do overextend, then you brawl. And you save the second one for Gul'dan, you can clean up their second push, and then you can start taking over the game and ending it with your hero power. So, so uh, I, I would like to really hear the reasoning behind this this brawl yeah. that uh, Rock Base ran out last turn. So uh, Rock Base, though, he's he goes ahead and expends the coin with the Phantom Militia in hand, and he completes the quest right now instead of one or two turns down the road. So Furious coming into the hand, and it's going to be online as soon as next turn if he wants it. Going to really start uh, pressuring Mike's uh, life total, which is already down to 21. Uh, Mike can play the Void Lord from hand, which he will do, uh, but he's going to have some work to do to, to punch through these two fours. Maybe have to rely on a board clear to do it. Yeah, I, I do like playing out this uh, Sulfurus next turn, because while tank up is very strong, and it does let you bridge into the late game, it's not going to win you the game by itself. The the Ragnaros hero power from Sulfurus is what's going to win you the game, so I like equipping this weapon here and just start start getting to work with the hero power. Yep, and uh, Rock Base is going to consider carefully uh, how he addresses this board. Uh, oh, he's reaching for that Brawl again, Appa. Oh, I don't know about this. I think he's getting this, super this, greedy. I, I think this might just show a little bit of inexperience in the matchup. Before, when uh, he actually messaged me his deck list, he said uh, he, he said something along the lines of, I'm, I'm not too sure about these lists, I haven't played them very much. So this <laughs> might just be a little bit of inexperience in the matchup. In, in fact, I think I have a quote uh, from Chris. Uh, he said, I have no idea what I'm doing, and may God have mercy on my soul. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, if if you go and review this later, Chris, uh, Appa and I both disagree uh, on the aggressive brawls here. You're not really being threatened by Mike Lowe's uh, board here. I mean, you're at 44 life. I, I think you're safe. I, I think you wanted to rely a little bit more on that Sulfurus. Uh, but uh, check this out. Mike Rowe now picking up Zola the Gorgon. Gonna get a little bit of extra card draw or or another uh, another tar lurker. What's which way is he gonna go? Oh, he's gonna heal. Interesting. Yeah, he, he's he's looking to kind of burn a card from his hand so he doesn't overdraw next turn. Ah. And picking up tar lurker is another body for the rag shots to hit. So I think it's fine here. I probably would have waited on it to get a, a void lord or something along those lines. Uh, or a Rin the First Disciple, mm -hmm. because we've been talking about Doomguard this entire game, and this isn't even a cute list. <laughs> yeah, that's just, true. <laughs> this is just a straight-up control lock. Oh, is list. it? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I thought I was thinking he had uh, he had cubes. Okay, well, that kind of does change the calculus a little bit. In fact, Rock Base, I wonder if he's making that read as well, Like because if there's not the threat of Doomguards... Maybe that's why he felt better about using the brawls, but I mean, you still need to save one brawl for the Ghoul Dan. Yeah, sure. I, I think I think when you're playing with double brawls in your hand, you got one of those saved for like turn twenty whenever yeah. the Ghoul Dan comes down. Well, the good news is though, he just did pick up uh, his second Reckless Flurry, so he has one more board clear available to him. And uh, do, does he run uh, the new uh, Echo Whirlwind? I'm curious. Uh, no, he can't run Warpath. Because okay. Oh, it's an even. That's right. It's a two-mana. Okay, well. Uh, so, uh, something I didn't actually consider is the Reckless Furies in the list, because they do serve as another board clear mm -hmm. after Gul'dan, but he does have to have the armor for it, so they're a little more situational. True. But they do, they can serve the same kind of purpose in, in a in a pinch. Yeah, and, and that's another thing, too. Uh, I believe Rock Base has expended both of his shield blocks which are an important combo card with the Reckless Flurry because it becomes a five mana uh, AOE uh, with uh, with those two cards in combination for six mana. Uh, so you, something you another card you definitely want to hold on to for the later game. Although uh, Rock Base did pick up a Black Wall Pixie here off the top, that's uh, going to be great juice for later on in the game once that hero power comes online. But uh, first he's got to address this board, which has gone quite wide uh, for Mike now that both brawls have been expended. It has gone barely, fairly wide, but it doesn't put on a ton of pressure very mm -hmm. well. He has a bunch of one-attack minions in the Void Walkers. He has the 2-2, two -two, he has the Possessed Lackey, uh, and he also has the Tar Lurker, which gets much worse on offense. 
So I think he's okay with like taking a little bit of time here developing the weapon because even though his the board is wide, it's not so much pressure that Rock Base can't deal with it. Right. And uh, Mike Lowe has yet to see Gul'dan. He's only got eight cards left in the deck. Uh, he's going to go ahead and use the Siphon Soul to get rid of that pesky uh, Direhorn Hatchling, put 6-9 into the deck. And uh, even though it's not a lot of damage all at once, that's quite a number of uh, minions going to face. And the Ooze takes care of the Sulfurus uh, to take that weapon off the board. And now that I double-checked the list and realized <laughs> that this is a Control Warlock deck, um, instead of as opposed to a classic cube lock, this Rin is going to play such a big factor. In the oh lake. yeah, yeah. So hasn't seen it yet, but it's it's going to be a factor. And uh, the reckless flurry does clear the board. Rock base uh, re recognizing he's not going to have that armor for long. He goes ahead and and clears the the board. Gets a hero power to the face. Blackwall picks. He gives him a second hit. Puts Mike low down to twelve now. Mike has very little healing now in hand. Just down to uh, this. Three damage Amethyst Spellstone. He really needs Gul'dan here and hasn't gotten it. He's going yeah, to have to rely. Black, this Blackwall Pixie is such a good card in mm -hmm. the Quest, de or the quest uh, Warrior decks because against aggro, it's seven mana for uh, eight armor gain. Mm -hmm. And against slow and mid-range decks, when you're trying to end the game, it's just 16 damage. <laughs> And another great piece of recognition on on the part of Rock Base, once he hit that Reckless Flurry, uh, the Possessed Lackey did not pick up a demon. So he saw there was no Doom Guard, which means no more demons. He can just go ahead and start uh, shooting oh, hero man. powers in the face. Yeah. Hits the Tar Lurker with the Rag Shot. That's Ooh. so good. Yeah, and then the Whirlwind plus a trade here is going to allow him to fully clear the board. Yeah, it looks like Rock Base is starting to really turn the corner on this one and start to put the pressure on Mike Lowe. Mike Lowe's really looking for this Gul'dan. He still hasn't found wow. it. He's found the second Spellstone, and he's kind of treading water right here, really. Yeah, really no threats remaining. He can play down the Primordial Drake, clear the Pixie, and uh, that Tar, Tar Lord's not going to be able to clear through it, but that's a 50-50 uh, on the on the, the Rag Shot to, to just clear the, the Primordial Drake for two mana. Uh, so th it's not a great play from Mike Lowe's perspective, but what else is he going to do here? This is very, exactly. very difficult. At, at these points against Taunt Warrior, you want to play big minions to kind of soak up damage from the board that they're presenting, but the big minions can also die to these rag shots, oh, there which it is goes. like such a loss of value. So you really want to get this wide board, which is why Gul'dan's so important. He he gives you this, the Drain Life Hero Power, Plus gets you a wide board and gains you armor against the uh, rag rag hero power. Mm -hmm. So he's really, really hoping for this to be his next card. If it's not, this is this might just be over. Yeah, Fiery War Axe gets picked up. Uh, Rotten Apple Bomb also puts in more than enough damage for Rock Base to finish the game. I, the Lich King is picked up. That's not cool, Dan. It will soak up a little bit of damage, but I think that is just lethal if he makes that play, Appa, because there's... Eight damage to put into the Lich King, and then the Ragshot can go face or vice versa. I think that's it. He has a way to not die if he double spell stones the Apple Bomb. It's mm. it feels terrible, but you gain six from that. You go up to fourteen, and then Rock Base only has twelve next turn, and it gives you another turn to find Gul'dan mm -hmm. if he doesn't find any more damage. So I think that's the only real line here because if he plays this Lich King, it either dies to the rag shot or Ooh. oh okay Mike's he, just gonna give may, it up he may have not seen the spellstone line for for the extra draw step but well, e either way that those were slim odds for mike low and rock base picks up that one with tom warrior yeah that's a that is a, a a great that's a difficult matchup to play as well i think and we gave uh we gave chris a little bit of heat for the for the greedy brawls but it worked out in his favor once he made the read that there were no doom guards in the deck so uh all the credit to him uh, for evening up the series here at one to one, now we're getting ready to jump into uh, into game three. Uh, but we want to tell you that there's one, there are matches going on all week, uh, and I do not have the match calendar in front of me, but I will grab it. Uh, but you, you can it, right here on this channel on uh, United H United Hearthstone League on Twitch, uh, you can find matches from all sixteen of these great competitors. Uh, usually pretty much any day of the week, and they're almost always cast uh, by great people like Appa and Wicked Good and Bodicus and all the, the really 
talented uh, voice talents from uh, Team Swagoy like Brasky and Steffi and Tom Locke. I'm telling you, this is a stacked league with a lot of entertainment value. You want to stick around. All right. Here's the the next match is uh, looks like it's uh, on Saturday. It's Versika from uh, from Hero Power uh, versus uh, Ziggy Sarah, uh, closely attached to 1600 Dust and a streamer as well. And uh, yeah, that's at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time, uh, just for your local time zone. And that's going to be right here on this Twitch channel. So follow this channel and get notified when these matches go live. You definitely want to stick around for those. So uh, Appa, go ahead and tell them to get started, and then uh, let's talk about the remainder of this match. It's down to a best of three. Uh, we have the Druid still from Mike, the Spiteful Druid, and the Secret Hunter uh, versus uh, Chris's uh, even, or excuse me, Odd Rogue and that even Shaman. What do you think? Well, the Druid actually got retired, so we still oh, have did the it. Keylock. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the, that's right. It's the Warlock that hasn't won. Yeah, I'm so used yeah. to just Warlock just winning all the time. You know? Yeah, you just, like, queue up a Warlock, and it's like, okay, that one's done. Okay. Let's, go the, let's go the rest of the... Is, the is Warlock in the lineup? Are we on game three? Okay, Warlock must have won. No, it didn't. That's right. <laughs> Chris did a great job of winning that match with the uh, with the uh, the Control Warrior, the uh, Taunt Warrior. Excuse me. Okay. Match three, game three coming up. We're going to see the Warlock versus the Shaman. All right, I'm really interested to see this Shaman. Up, uh, this is uh, Shaman. I mean, everybody got excited about that Shutterwalk OTK. Turns out it wasn't that good. Uh, yeah. 40, 45% win rate. But some promise being shown by all those juicy keywords along with, like, Countess Ashmore and these Corpse Takers. And this little guy yeah. right here, Merc Spark Eel, two mana, two, three, Merc deal two. Merc Spark Eel is really one of the reasons to play this again, Grey Mane Shaman. Mm -hmm. Because although it doesn't deal three damage, it is very similar to Medivh's Ballet, except yes. you don't need setup. You just play it on turn two, and it just pings something for two, and that's so powerful. And it's something that Shaman really lacks, is strong early plays. They have, they have some catch-up mechanics sometimes with... Uh, lightning storm and maelstrom portal which did rotate out but they really had to lean on those in the past and merc sparker eels like really powerful because it can win the board basically by itself by yeah. turn two yeah you're right and and it's uh rock base is setting up to do exactly that uh but i, I will say though I, mike probably feels like he's going to be in control of this matchup shaman traditionally a, a deck that likes to go wide and i don't think this even deck is uh, a, a, any exception and Warlock, especially the control variant, excels at dealing with wide boards. Yeah, Shaman is traditionally not a fan of Hellfire and friends. No. <laughs> so, so Hellfire plus Defile plus this Lord God Prayer are going to make for a tough time for the Shaman deck, I, I would imagine. Yep, and uh, the second Merc Spark Eel coming into hand going to uh, be played behind that one mana hero power, uh, which is... I, it's it, I've been playing even uh, Paladin, and I tell you, being able to put a body down every single turn is so good. Yeah, being able to sequence in these one mana hero powers is fairly powerful. Even if they are silly totems, the totems do have applications, mm -hmm. and even though, though they're not the strongest of cards, they they do put something on the board that you have to deal with. And the first Hellfire gets deployed by Mike Lowe to clear the board. Rock base going to have to uh, reach for one of these Corpse Takers plus a hero power. Uh, let's see how much uh, he's going to get out of this. That's Wind Fury, Taunt, Divine Shield, and Life. That's the that's the full package, Appa. That is that a is powerful the, that four is drop. The, the quad factor. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike's got the spells, the spell breaker ready. Your magic will not save you this time, Rock Base. Uh, going to have to go back to that second one that he's got sitting in hand to be played. If if, you if, if I was rock base right here, I would probably corpse taker and trade into the spellbreaker. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm not sure if I would save the divine shield on the second corpse taker or not. It's really interesting because you really want this to stick around if you draw this flame tongue totem off the top. Okay, so he does go for the trade to preserve this divine shield, which is really important against warlocks AOEs that aren't twisting other. Yep, and uh, Mike Lowe, no more board clears in hand, but the Doomsayer at least offers the, the threat of a board clear, especially if he wants to plant that behind Stonehill Defender. Uh, so Mike Lowe might be able to stall the board here, and he is on turn six, and he's going to go with a double Phantom Militia instead. 
don't know how I feel about it. I think I kind of prefer the Doomsayer, but I guess he wants to hold it for a bigger board, perhaps. Uh, rock base, though, picking up into some uh, some heavy in-game ma uh, material here. Uh, Argent Commander, Sea Giant still waiting in hands. And, uh, of course, again, Grey Mane himself. He's not a bad card by himself. He's a 6-mana six 6-5. Six I mean, it's you don't feel bad playing that on turn six, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Again, Greymane is definitely the less feel bads to run him mm -hmm. out whenever you draw him because he is just a fairly fine stat of minion for his mana cost. He is the six mana six five, and like if you play him on curve, it's not too bad. It's it presents a significant threat that your opponent has to deal with. Yep, and uh, rock, rock based leveraging the Wind Fury off of the Corpse Taker to both clear the board in co combination with the Argent Commander and get back to thirty health. Uh, so Mike Lowe now has to consider his options uh, because this board, he has no board clears. He's going to have to go ahead and pull a Void, void Lord out of the deck and uh, top himself off to uh, 30 as well. Yeah, but this Void Lord with no hex response mm. might just be good enough to stabilize this board for a few turns. Could be. It, uh. It's really difficult for wide board decks like this Shaman right here to punch through a Void Lord without some alt alternative way to deal with it. Yep, and uh, Rock Base, he did have the opportunity uh, to play that Flame Tongue Totem uh, to... Oh, it looks like he's going to coin it out anyway. Uh, and that'll help him trade down this 3-9 body. Although, if I, I may be mistaken, off of the time, check my math, but if he played the Flame Tongue first, would he been, have been able to play the Sea Giant without the coin? Uh, yeah, he, he could have also free-rolled the Totemic Call Hero Power. Oh, that's true, it, yeah. It reduces the cost of sea giant by one so it's effectively free on this turn mm -hmm. so yeah he, he he would have been able to do both of those and interestingly rock base trades in the basic totem in order to perhaps play around godfrey slash uh uh defile and uh void lord void walker is going to take care of that flame tongue totem and block off the sea giant for now rock base though still got a decent amount of power in hand but he those were his big plays there and uh have not really done any damage with them you it, it might look counterintuitive to run this rim out right now but this guarantees it popping if rock base doesn't have a hex that turn and rin's such a powerful card in these slow grindy matchups which these these can kind of boil down to and mike low really does not want this rin to get hexed and now he's pretty much guaranteed this is already the devourer as yeah. long as he can kind of stabilize his board and keep the pressure off so yeah. this this Rin that he just threw down in this Doomsayer might just win in the game by itself. Yeah, that uh, that Doomsayer behind the Void Lord was a great play for Mike. It, it guaranteed him the ability to do exactly as you said, to start hitting two of those uh, Seal Demons every single turn. Rock Base, so picking up Alakir the Wind Lord, going to put a little bit of uh, board pressure, although Mike's at 30. <laughs> control deck at 30 is not where you want to see a control deck, especially one that is initiated one of its main win conditions and ran the first disciple Oof. uphill climb for rock base <laughs> i like the little hoof Oof. <laughs> this is a toughie yeah this is this is not Ooh, looking man. great for rock base and this is kind of what i was worried about with the shaman deck is that's a fairly solid early game into a mid game but the problem with shaman right now is whenever when you're trying to accrue incremental advantage against a deck that is running out void lords on turn six, you might be trying to do the wrong things. Yep, and uh, Mike Lowe not able to get a full clear, uh, no no board clear in hand, and leaving a couple minions on board. Rock base could have uh, run out, or inst actually still can run out the uh, defender of Argus here. Uh, to start building a little, bit of a wall and start trying to fight back on this board, but uh, it, he's he's on the defensive foot against a control deck, and that's just not where you want to be. Yeah, he's also held this acidic swampies for a while, and I I would like to see him play it out here. Honestly, I don't think he can beat a hellfire or a board clear because he's so resource light. And if if he's really thinking about this, and he had a heads up play would be realizing that Mike Lowe is not on cue block, which means he's not running Skull of the Minari, most likely, because mm -hmm. the control decks don't run it. Most of the cube decks do. So this Acidic Swamp is that Rock Base is holding really isn't going to do too much this game. It's just it's just going to be a 3-2. So I would have liked to see him run it out this last turn as a body to start pressuring Mike Lowe or contesting this board a little bit. Yep, and Mike has now won the board more or less with the Seal Demons 
Uh, and he has played the final seal that gives him Azari the Devourer, which will destroy Rockbase's deck. And Rockbase has not been able to draw any cards with this deck. No Mana Tide Totem, nothing like that has come out. And he's he's only halfway through his deck. Fourteen cards burned is is gonna be the beginning of the end for Rockbase with only three cards left in hand. Yeah, this is this is another weakness that I see in this even Shaman deck is that it has no card draw. Like it has none of the power cards in like uh hex or even volcano to like get back on the board sometimes. Mm-hmm. You you do make sacrifices for the strong early game in that your mid and late game does get a little bit worse whenever you cut out the even or the the odd cards that are that are very powerful and traditionally play most mid range shaman builds. And this Azari is going to come down, and all all Rock Base has to work with is this one one totem, the Stone Claw totem, this two three Defender of Argus, again Greymane, an Acidic Swamp Ooze, and a Stormforge Dax. And against the hand with Witch King, <laughs> Siphon Soul, Spellstone, Void Lord, and fourteen cards in the deck. Yep, Mike can now rem- clear the board more or less at will, challenge it at will, draw more cards to pick up more stuff if he wants it. Mike Lowe is literally and figuratively holding all the cards here. Um, <laughs> oh, it, even a twisting nether to add insult to injury. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would not be surprised to see Mike Lowe siphon soul the uh, the stone claw totem, but <laughs> <laughs> just to send the message. Right, but no, he he goes ahead and makes the trade and uh, picks up Gen Gray main with the siphon soul and yeah, uh, rock and base. This is, this is gonna wrap it up. For this one. <laughs> yep. Uh, looks like the wall plate's coming out, and face plate explodes. Great. Yeah, so, so, so we're getting into the the unknown variable here is the the big secret hunter. Yeah. Which also, upon closer inspection, you know what else it runs, Cinder? Mm, what's that? It runs two copies mm. of Alarmabot. What? <laughs> oh, oh, wait. I see. Is he running Emerus? He's. No, he's no. running his his minions are two alarm robots, okay. two stitch trackers, two bitter tide yeah. hydras, a witchwood grizzly, a swamp king dread, lich king, king crush, and death ring. Oh my goodness! So, <laughs> I, I I was I, I was interested to see if he was running uh, uh, Emerus to like double the hand the the stats and then alarm robot it out on the next turn, but yeah, I, I guess not. Um, yeah, and Oppa, let them know they can go ahead and play out the rest of the match. We're, yep. we're done with our announcements. No more talk stone. We're just going to cast the rest of this series. Uh, Alarm Robot, though, I don't know how I feel about that. That's It's very cheeky, but it's it's never really functioned as a card because you can't keep it from being dealt with on the board, right? Like, it's it's yeah. a zero three, very easy to trade, very easy to remove. It's at that uh, that three health. Break point. It's, it's it's a very fragile but very powerful card. Yeah, and, and, and most of the time when you see it, it it does look like a meme. Yeah, because it's a meme. But it whenever it triggers and your opponent pulls out something really big, you're like, oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you what, Mike needs to be the defender here in this in this matchup against this uh, this odd rogue, and double explosive trap plus a spell stone. Is about as good as he can. He wants it to be, quite honestly. Yeah, I think this is about as good as you're getting from yeah. Mike Lowe's perspective. Uh, all um, he he might want a mulligan to spellstone. Oh, for... I don't know about that. I'm, I'm saying might. I'm, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm giving okay. a little bit of consideration to maybe mulliganing to like look for a freezing trap or a mm-hmm. wandering monster against something like a hench clan thug. But then again, like the spellstone is very powerful. So I. I I think it's a little too risky to mulligan this, looking for uh, like those two specific cards. Yeah, it's and you know I Mike, I, I have not seen his build anywhere else. This might be uh, his original brew, and, and if it is, he is a recognized something about the hunter class that I think a lot of people are sleeping on. Is the fact that you can build hunter to to deploy minions via spells and spells alone for much of the game and save your actual minion plays for big bombs which is where the alarm bot comes in. Uh Mike Yeah, this is this is something you tinkered around with for a while Still the, still am. 
Yeah, with the Recruit Hunter decks, with King Crush and the, the big dinosaurs at the top yep. end, right? Yeah, in fact, a as of right now, that deck can OTK on turn 7. Uh, it, if oh my goodness. Yeah, it's, it's not... It's not something that, ha that happens often. You usually just, you know, you're just going to hit him for like 15 or 20 on turn seven, but you can OTK with that deck. But uh, Mike Lowe deploys, I'll tell everybody about that later. <laughs> Mike Lowe, de <laughs> he deploys the first explosive trap to get that uh, spell stone uh, start kicked off. Uh, is not the minion he wanted to, to, to put it up against. Uh, all it did was eat the divine shield, but it did allow him to uh, guarantee a four wolf spell stone on turn five. And a uh, 2-4 body here with uh, Liak is not bad. It's it's difficult for Rock Base to remove with what he has in hand. But, but tell you what, that Hinch Clan thug is... He, that is the new questing adventurer for Rogue, I feel like. He is su uh, such a good card. If you don't remove him on the first turn, he just gets way out of control way fast. Yeah, scaling minions have traditionally been very, very powerful. Uh, and ones that come down early are even better. And Hench Clan Thug really hits all of those marks that you want in, in an aggressive minion. Comes down on three or two sometimes with the coin, mm -hmm. and then it starts putting a lot of pressure on your opponent. And it demands an answer right away. And if you stumble, you're probably going to lose. Yeah. But Mike Lowe did not stumble. He had the kill command, so it looks like he'll still be in this one. Yep, and uh, Rock Base going to have to just deploy the Cobalt Apprentice on three. Feels kind of bad. Uh, he could coin out uh, a dagger here and uh, clean off the Leoc if he wants to. Uh, he's going to opt for the Glacial Shard. The, oh, clear, you hitting it on face, anticipating maybe a bow charge. But That's, This is interesting huh. because Michael hasn't played a bow, and I think he would have played it at Ooh, this point. I like this oh, from Mike. Mike. I really oh, like this. I, I like this considering the contents of his hand. He has yeah. the, the fully upgraded Spellstone. He has this Swamp King Dread, and he has this King Crush, which represents a ton of damage. Yeah, you're right. And Rock Base is going to lose one or both of these minions, depending on how he attacks uh, into this trap. So Mike Lowe could really swing this in his favor. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that kill command play. It was aggressive, to say the least, but I don't know. Like, I'll see how this plays out. Maybe Mike Lowe just sees a line that I don't see, and is is really looking to turn turn up the gas here. Well, it, it, putting one of the things that I've learned experimenting with this class as much as I have, if if you have a beast on board and you're not going to get one for a while, you want to just dump out that five damage if it's going to get you to to an end game position. Because now he's going to deploy twelve damage on board. Next turn he's going to drop another nine, and then after that another eight charge. So so this is a two or three turn lethal scenario. And he knows full well that Rock Base cannot clear four wolves. So he knows some of or all of this is going to face. So I he's... love seeing this board state and then looking in Mike Lowe's hand of <laughs> Swamp King Dread, King Crush, and Alarmabot. And he is putting a ton of pressure on Rock Base right now. Yep. This is this is fantastic deck building right here. I love this. Yeah, I all I've in fact, we, we have to see if we can pull Mike in for an interview, and and, and Chris, too, if he wants to, because um, I, I definitely want to want to talk about this deck uh, once we're done here. Um, but first, we gotta, we got to get through this match. Rock Base considering carefully how he's going to deal with this uh, board. He's not. He's going full face. He's going to say, I'll race you. But Appa, I gotta, I gotta tell you, I don't think this is a race that Rock Base is gonna win. He, he's initiating this race, and he is in a horse-drawn carriage, and Mike Lowe is in a Ferrari right and, now. And, and he's, if he's gonna lose this one, <laughs> if you want to talk about bad flips, last turn Chris play uh, drew Baku, which is the only, well, only beast in the deck besides the Iron Beak Owl, and then the uh, the Fox gives him Kathrena, which could have summoned them both from the deck. So, yeah, absolutely. That, that, that's, talk about feels bad. <laughs> oh, and he draws the other Iron Peak out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Chris. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. So, Mike Lowe decides to go ahead and trade the board, which I'm okay with. He's still in the in the lead on the board. He's still setting up basically a one-turn lethal here if, if King Crush gets pulled by the Alarmabot. Uh, this is so oh. cool how this Alarmabot is playing right now because he has these two wolves that he wants to deal with. Yeah. But then he also has this unassuming 0-3 that can just, like, spit out something disgusting. <laughs> well, he, he saw the writing on the wall and silenced that 0-3. says, nah, -uh, you're going to have to play fair for at least one more turn. Uh, but Mike still has a, 
uh, options, he can go with the Animal Companion, which would produce a, quite a bit of damage. That would actually put Rock Base on two, possibly, if he rolls a Huffer. Or just play out the Dread and say, hey, you can't play any cards until you deal with this guy. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, this does play well into Rock Base's Vital Spine Slayer, yeah. though. Which yeah. will grab the board back a little bit, but... It, this King Crush is going to put him down to a really low life total. Yeah. But it, it's going to come down to if he can navigate these next two turns very carefully in terms of how much damage he can take versus put out. Yeah. Because Rock Base might be able to form a counterattack here. Yeah. He absolutely has to address the both of these beasts, which he does. Uh, and, and that does get him back on the board. King Crush, though, I gotta believe that's coming down to set Mike to uh, set Chris to three. But can Rock Base do 14 damage over the next two turns in order to outpace this King Crush? Put him to 14. He has eight on board. I mean, a Leroy off the top is enough if he draws it. Yeah. But this, this Freezing Trap was actually a really good draw. It kind of. Gonna like, give... it, it gives him a virtual three life here. When he and rolled Huffer. Roll. Oh my goodness. So that's gonna that's gonna deliver six more damage. Put rock base at five. Freezing trap's gonna protect the hand uh, protect the face from three damage, but it does put a vile spine back in rock base's hand, but at this point it doesn't matter. Because and, and this should be it? Yes, yeah. this, this king crush for lethal. Yeah. There's there's no burst damage in Rock Base's hand. It's it's all utility or or just trash. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Whenever I signed up to be casting, I did not think I was gonna cast a board that had a silenced alarm robot and a King Crush coming down for lethal <laughs> against an aggro rogue. <laughs> Blink Fox's uh, Kathrena. Oh, he does have another beast. Oh, it's a Dire Mole, of course. <laughs> It is astounding, Mike. I agree. And uh, Rock Base probably thinking he has the board. He has a two-turn lethal setup here. Bum, bum, and bum. The, the Bad news. Is, is coming down for lethal. The king of Ungoro himself, King Crush. Oh, my Straight goodness. Straight to the face. And I like what how he... he finish. <laughs> Mike hesitated for a second to savor that and... <laughs> I applaud you for that, Mike. Well played. 3-1 series win for Mike. What a great start to uh, to Mike's career here uh, in United Hearth League. He's, uh, Chris, of course, played last season in season one, kind of the, the beta experimental season. Mike's the newcomer. Uh, but, man, that's that's quite an opening up. Uh, I am impressed. That was the, – the Secret Hunter was definitely – the unknown variable that we were looking at and did it deliver in that in that final game yeah it sure did uh and if since uh, i'm i'm using discord to show your face to the world if you want to see if you can grab mike uh for for a quick uh word about that hunter deck i'd love to talk to him about it um and uh we'll see if we can track down chris i'm sure they're all they're both just hanging out in the uh the uhl uh backstage lounge on the discord as it were um but yeah this is this is a a great start. Uh, Mike is he's had a great day. <laughs> he got his Twitch affiliate email this morning, uh, and uh, he won his first match in UHL. And he's also just got started on a podcast, The Clock, uh, which he does with Levity. That's that's a, that's a good cast. There, he, he, I tell you what, I, Mike kind of came out of nowhere, started following some some various casts and, and players, and started just talking to everybody in the community and then all of a sudden hey by the way i'm doing my own stream i'm podcasting i'm playing in a in a in a publicly uh cast league with uh with with all these these other uh, podcasters and players and just like that mike becomes a fixture in the community um nicest guy in the world too uh and chris you're you're, you're also very nice i don't want to leave you out of that conversation <laughs> Can we add them to this Discord call? Ah, uh, yeah, I believe we can. Hopefully, it, your face might get uh, 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 that's fine. moved out of the way, but that's okay. So we're going to bring up Mike. Do I, do I, do I have to be friends? I might have to be friends with him. Oh, no. How about how about Rock Base? Can we, oh, we can pull Rock Base in. Let's do that first. <laughs> we'll start uh, start him first. And uh, I'll see if I can add Mike 
Uh, oh, Chris, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, getting a little feedback, but um, we can hear you, yeah. Mm. Nope. Okay. I heard. Okay, wait, I can kind of hear you. <laughs> So I've got this really narrow window of getting too close to the microphone in case we're not being heard at all. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Good enough. Um, I'm going to try and uh, get uh, Mike set up as well. So, Appa, do you have – I'm going to let you uh, field a, a question or two for, for Chris and for the audience. Uh, yeah, so in the Taunt Warrior versus Q Block uh, game, we, we were – kind of talking about how usually you want to save one of the brawls for the ghoul band turn, and you were using them a little more aggressively. We, we were wondering if that was a little bit of matchup inexperience, or if you had uh, a plan in mind for kind of rushing the quest out and clearing the board as early as possible. So um, what, what were kind of your thoughts whenever you were using the brawls so early? My thought was, oh crap, he didn't queue in the hunter while we were taking it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So um, it was a little bit of an experience. Um, I, I, Warrior was my hardest decision um, mm -hmm. for which version to play. And I ended up going with, with Taunt, and then I figured, okay, I might as well go with the odd Taunt Warrior. And I, I knew that that wasn't a favorable matchup, so I figured um, he's not, he's not, he's not going to lose to me if I treat this in a little more of a control fashion. So I just tried to be as aggressive as the cards allowed me to go. And I think I was as surprised as anyone else watching that I actually pulled that one out. <laughs> yeah, it, it was really nice after you cleared the second time, uh, and then you rag shot of the tar lurker. It like at that point, like the game was pretty much all but over because the contents of his hand were like they were board clears and then really dinky big minions that just died to the rag shot. Yeah, and it was one of those things where it, it's like I said, I knew that. We've reached the point where he he's just so much more powerful than I am, and I kept every every turn I kept reeling. It's like, is this the turn Gul'dan comes out? Is this the turn Gul'dan comes yeah. out? Because I knew the second that happened, I was done. And so, with that in the back of my head, it's like, just go for it. And you know, it's, it's snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, basically. Yeah. yeah he, so, sometimes you just like go for the really aggressive lines, and it pays off. One yeah. out of three times. <laughs> yeah, we we were we were also waiting for the uh, the Gul'dan to come down, and uh, it never did. <laughs> like it, I think he went through almost the entire deck, and, and never saw Gul'dan the entire time. Bottom seven. Yep. And then, uh, how do you feel about the Odd Rogue? It's uh, it seems to be you know one of the one of the strongest decks coming out, but uh, kind of got um, outraced there by that Secret Hunter. Yeah, it was um so I could I could I could blame some of that on my lack of experience with it. Um Rogue never treats me very well. You can talk to your Ruthless hat about that. Rogue and I have <laughs> um, a love hate relationship. When it works well for me it works really well, but a lot of the time it's just a class that for some reason kind of eludes me in a lot of ways. So I knew I wanted to play it uh rather early to to kinda of try and get it out of the way as far as um with the nine week, with the three week schedule we have with all nine classes, and so I queued it first because sometimes Rogue can just kind of steal wins away from you, which is which is pretty ironic given what the um, what the class is designed to do. Uh, that second that second game game four with it, it's it just felt like it it just wasn't giving me what I wanted, and I tried to switch on the gas again to race, and I knew that it was going to be a, a losing venture. Um, I was grateful to have the um, the uh, uh, Iron Beak Owl so that I could shut down the Alamo bot, but I tell you, Blink Fox was trolling me tonight, something curious. Yeah. Oh you, you hit the Katharina off the the uh, Blink Fox, and then you drew the Baku and both your owls. Yes. <laughs> so you had the, the Dire Mole <laughs> left. Dire Mole, let's see what we can do here. And it was, I, I relegated it at that point, it's like play it to a tempo play, and um, it it was just on curve, big body, and and I did, and it just didn't work out. But um, you know, they were great games. Yeah, and um, we're still waiting for 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 Mike to get that uh, that friend request in. So, uh, Appa, you got uh, anything else for for Chris before we switch over? 
Uh, not really. Um, how did you feel about the Even Shaman? Because whenever I've seen it played, it has a fairly strong early game, and then it gasses out, like, it, very, very quickly. And then, like, whenever it's in the late game, it, it looks like it's a fairly underpowered mid-range deck, in my opinion. It's extremely underpowered, especially late game. And honestly, my hope with that was to try and, and um, I guess, make him mulligan into thinking that I was bringing Shutterlock or something like that. And, it, and again, it was just... I know I don't want to play Shutterlock. Um, I don't want to put the stream through that. <laughs> what other options were available to me? I thought about going Spirit Odd with all three, but the the even one it was it was working out okay for me. But you're right on the nose. You got to win quick with that deck, and you know you pick your classes, and then you see what your opponent has brought, and it's like okay, so I pick Shaman, and it's there, there's late game is not in my favor. So I kind of knew that that was going to be a dead deck, almost unless something really miraculous happened. Yeah, and and the I think the only way to kind of flip the matchup into your favor a little bit is to draw hex. And we just didn't see see a hex from you uh, in the in the cube block game, which is kind of unfortunate. But yeah. that's just kind of the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, I'm staring at this list and going, "Ooh, that deck's not great." Yeah. <laughs> Would have been a yeah, transform effects so so powerful in in this meta right now. I think so. Yeah, that's something to consider for week four at the very least. <laughs> at least week four, or ladder could do ladder. At that point, yeah. But but no, so it was it was you know just in general, it's trying to find that that mix of um, what can I bring that I know is going to be powerful uh, versus what my opponent's going to. You know, and, and especially at the start of a new uh, standard rotation, there's that added, you know, it, it's not like it was last season where we, we knew that decks A, B, and C are the powerful decks that define the meta. In this, you kind of know that, but there's still a lot of mystery around it. So, you know, I did my experimenting, and I, and I played around with it a little bit, and I, I just kind of ended up going, okay, you know, it's week one, um, let's, let's kind of poke at it and see what happens, and so that's why I went with the classes that I went with. Yeah, I, I really like your Baki Rogue that you brought because, like you said, uh, if if someone is playing with Rogue and, like, either they don't play it a lot or it doesn't treat them well or they just have a tough time with it, like, picking something proactive is very important. And it, it, it's a deck that's proactive. It has very powerful draws. Um, but it just kind of didn't pan out in this match, which which is the way it goes sometimes. The, the other option would probably be, like... Um, the quest rogue, which has a lot more polarized matchups, so I really like kind of buckling down and just picking the more powerful, proactive strategy as opposed to the really complicated combo one. Yeah, in a, in a deck, in a, in a tournament or tournament setting where you can where you have bands and it, the meta is a lot more of a factor into what you do than you know, like PHL for example, and and also when you have a team behind you that you want to make sure you're not quote unquote letting down, even though they'd be the first ones to tell you that you're not. It's just, okay, I want to experiment, I want to do fun stuff, I want to have a good time, you know, for myself and for the stream. And, you know, basically the only thing I did that was off, you know, off of the list that I found and kind of, I made sure I tweaked them all so that I was I was being real conscientious of the fact that I want weapon destruction and I want silence effects. So, you know, the, the Tempo Rogue, I made sure that I had the two Iron Beak Owls in there. Mm -hmm. I threw in um, Harrison Jones. It, it's just okay, and then it ended up. I, I didn't even see it. He didn't even play a weapon with his hunter build. And I don't know if he didn't draw one or if he didn't have him in his deck list. But you know that was really kind of shocking to me too. That you know I kept thinking, okay, this is this is the bow. It's not the bow. This is candle shot, and there's no candle shot. So so yeah, it's just one of those really interesting things that sometimes happens when you know, play Hearthstone. Yep. The uh, the. Cards definitely worked in Mike's favor in uh, that game four. And uh, Chris, I want to thank you for, for jumping on to talk with us. Uh, good luck in uh, future weeks. Uh, hope to see you again real soon on stream. And thank you both for streaming. Yeah, absolutely. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Let's, uh, let's see if we can bring on Mike. All right, Mike, if you can hear us, uh, say so. Hey, Mike. It's like being in radio again. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Lowe, your number is called. Hey, how's it going, man? There he is. What's up, Mike? There he is. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, congratulations. You won your uh, first match in week one of, of UHL season two. 
Uh, very well done. Uh, how's it feel to uh, to come <laughs> off of a three one uh, for your for your first match? Uh, it feels pretty good. Um, uh, the first game, I was surprised he played the uh, the dust fallen Aviana. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, these next two games must be difficult if he's throwing me this win. Like that was crazy. I got the uh, two spitefuls. <laughs> right. That was insane. Yeah, he, he was. I, I, if you go back and watch the replay, I think you'll see he's kind of left with no options and hoping for the best, uh, which obviously didn't yeah. work out. You drew that his, second his, spike his hand <laughs> was was not great at that point. And oh, okay. Was out there. But yeah. then the punish with the double spiteful turn was awesome. Oh man, that was insane! Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so we were um, we were really super curious about um, two of your deck choices. First of all, you you went with a control variant for Warlock in a meta that is so far very strongly leaning towards cubes with uh, with Doom Guards, uh, and then that secret hunter list which looks like a homebrew so first let's talk about the control lock what made you decide to go with control over cube all right so um i didn't bring cubes because i pretty much run into it like the rest of us every day on ladder yeah um, i just kind of want to bring it different to uhl if we're going to have you know people come watch um i figured bring a different element and i have the same stuff we all see on ladder um so that was the idea there and i knew i was going to run into a uh, warrior Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to spread the board wide, as wide as possible, um, without using cubes. I know cubes will accomplish that, but I um, just want to play something different. And um, I had just crafted um, what's the what's the legendary Lord, Lord uh, Godfrey? Um, help me out. Yeah, Lord Godfrey. Yeah. yeah. So I, I built the list there. Um, I didn't draw as you guys saw um, <laughs> the Death Knight the first time. Yeah. I'm like Wait. screaming in my living room, like, where is this card at? The, <laughs> oh my goodness, like. It's like that's well, that that's one of your two end games. We're waiting for it, and it just never came out. Especially with both brawls having been expended, we're just yeah. He was, he was so was, excited. Yeah, he was hiding in the bottom. He did not want to come out. Nope. Nah, he was chilling. Yeah, and it's and uh, then, go ahead. Yeah, this this, this hunter deck looks okay. So sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So this isn't my list. Okay. I got this list from my buddy uh, Truly Malice. He's a player for uh, Hooked Esports. Okay. He tweeted this list. Um. April 13th, around noontime. Mm -hmm. um, he was saying that uh, it's a newer list without Baku. The uh, spells, um, there's more spells. Um, he's still refining the list. The uh, spells help a lot. And he was saying that the um, Alarm Bot and the Death Knight bring matchups. Um, so the version that you guys saw, I've never actually won um, with this deck that way. That was crazy. So. Nice. It took me a, lo a long choice to actually mulligan if I should keep those two um, secrets. Yeah, Appa and so I were. If, if you're wondering, that that was why I was trying to decide. Oh no, we we had that conversation when that match started. I liked I liked the two uh, two flame tr explosive traps in the spellstone. Appa was thinking maybe something else, but I don't know. That's hard to 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 send back when you're, when you're facing off against a, a, an aggressive rogue like that. Yeah, um, I've only played this deck like uh, 40 times, so like to me, it's only. not that much experience. This is Malice's deck, so um, I'm glad I played it right. Um, I'm glad the, um, did you guys see that with the uh, Alarm Robot? I had to make him choose between that and the Wolves. Yep. Yeah, but, that, uh, he, that still, was... he, he still had the silence. I was like, no, I wanted to get one of those out, man. Yeah, that was yeah. that was going to be a guaranteed lethal if he didn't have that silence. So yeah, we, we, we were definitely keyed on to that. But yeah, I want to try my best, uh, my best to bring you know some uh, new flavor to the UHL, not just bring same old meta decks, same yeah. old ladder decks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we we enjoyed the hack out of it, man. So uh, you you got a sneak peek for us into week two? Maybe give us a teaser on what we can expect. Uh, I can't say anything because next week I play the league champion. So you know, <gasps> you're playing yeah, hat. I, yeah, oh. I, I got a long road here, so I got to stay focused. You know, oh stay humble gosh. and just keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that match is gonna be fire. Yeah, cause, well, Chris is so Chris was not a gimme by any stretch of the imagination, man. He's very experienced. He's got a lot of exactly competitive exactly, play yeah. under his belt. So you're off to a good start. But we're gonna look forward to that uh, ridiculous hat versus Mike Lowe. That's gonna be that's gonna be fire. Uh, it's gonna be crazy, man. Yeah, I'm, I got I, I gotta go. I gotta start training now. All right, Mike. <laughs> Check you later. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, so thanks once again to Chris uh, and Mike for stopping in for, for a little uh, talk stone uh, at the end of the match there. We, we appreciate their time. And, uh, well, Discord's just going to go wonky on me. So I, I, I'll bet your face is no longer um, sitting pretty for the, for the for audience. So 
<laughs> we'll go ahead and, and wrap this up for now. Thanks, everybody, for uh, for showing up for this match. Lots of fun, lots of creative decks, lots of great play uh, seen there, and some good luck and some bad luck, too. Appa, final thoughts uh, for, for the match? Um, no, I think I covered pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Uh, we're we're going to be back on Saturday, right? For, for Secret yeah. versus Ziggin? Yeah, there's, yeah oh, that's, we are casting that together. All right, so. Yeah, we're, we're, we're scheduled for that at 8 o'clock on Saturday. Yes, winning, winning so <laughs> hard. So come back for that. Not for me, but come back for, for Versika and Ziggy, uh, who are two of the most entertaining people in the Hearthstone community. If you don't follow them, Go follow, go find them. They're 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 followed by UHL, and I follow them, and I'm sure Appa does too. Go find their great people, and follow Mike, and follow uh, Chris as well. Follow all the players who are a part of this great league, uh, because the entertainment value is going to be going for another eleven weeks after this one. I'm really looking forward to it. So for Appa and the rest of uh, UHL, good night. We are going to see you in just two days.